I wanted to check some true wireless stuff out, so let's take a look. The, now this is the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless earbuds. They're, uh, they're supposed to be really good. Now Sennheiser is known for making really expensive, fancy-looking products, as well as well, you know, sounding very good. And uh, I expect this to be at the similar caliber. This is a Bluetooth 5.0 product. It also has aptX. Inside we have the case itself. We got a little two earbuds, which should magnetically clip in, but I'll do that a little later. You gotta slip with basic instructions in case you don't know how to put them in and charge it. What you get out the box is the case itself with the earbuds in it. You got a cable, and you also get your ear tips of three different sizes. You get four total if you include the ones on the thing. And you also get some books. Now the case itself is light, made of plastic, and covered of a nice feeling like textured cloth material. On the back is a USB-C port for charging, and a little button to check the charging status of it. Generally it just tells you if it's uh, ready or not. Now though, while the case is light, it does feel solid, and it's held together by a little magnet. Well, the closure anyway. Um, this keeps it from opening up randomly in your bag or your purse or something like that. Uh, the little earbuds are also held in by magnets, so that's always good to see. This is how they charge, and putting them in is pretty easy. You don't have to fumble around too much with it. There will be fumbling when you try to take it out, though, due to um, its shape and its kind of slippery sides, which we'll take a look at. Taking a closer look at these little guys, they're relatively small. You get the left and right markings so you know where they go pretty easily. LEDs to let you know if they're on or off, or um, if they're trying to pair, or if they already are paired, which they are right now currently. The ear chips you can change out if you don't like them, but the stock ones I found to be appropriate for my ears. Now you also have touch capacitive controls. There are no buttons, though I do find that a little annoying sometimes. You have uh, little holes for your microphone for uh, the ambient modes. They're also used when you're making calls so they can cancel out outside noise that you wouldn't want in the conversation. Controls are relatively simple. This is how they look at my ears. Now to actually control it, you hold the right side. This will volume up. Holding the left side will volume down. It's pretty simple. Now, if you want to skip forward a track, you're going to have to press it twice. Though, this is going to be a little finicky. If you press too fast, it won't register sometimes. So I got to tap it a little slower. One, two, and then I skip forward. To skip back, you tap it three times on the left side. Which I think is personally a bit much, but um, there's a reason for this, apparently. To pause and play, you just press the left side once. Now, Sennheiser's reason for not using the right side double tap for changing tracks is because they wanted to use it to turn on and off a neat feature called ambient mode. This mode lets you hear around you while still playing your music in case you want to take a walk and not get hit by a car, or you're listening to a bit of your music and you want to listen in on a conversation secretly, or maybe you're just, you know, talking to someone around you. Either way, it's a neat feature, though the touch capacitive controls kind of make the experience a little difficult. Like, it doesn't work the first few times sometimes, which can get annoying, but once you got it, well, you got it. Sennheiser also has an app which automatically detects their stuff, lets you know if your transparent hearing thing is on, if your batteries are good, lets you turn on and off settings here and there. I like to turn off voice assistant because I think it's annoying, and sometimes it activates when I try to turn on the transparent or ambient mode. The best feature for this is probably the equalizer. This is the neatest thing. You want more bass, no problem. You want less bass, no problem. And the best thing is you can be adjusting this while listening to your music. So you can find how you like it while still listening to the track rather than, you know, stopping the track to adjust it, then replaying it. And it's the best feature for it. Still, the battery indicators are a little inaccurate and uh, that's problematic, but they should fix this with firmware eventually. Now because this is Bluetooth 5.0 and uses Aptex, I want to test these things out for their latency so I can watch movies and I can watch videos without any sort of lag, but I also want to try this out for games, so let's have a listen. I don't know about you, but this looks pretty good to me. Now I decided to hop into a game of Overwatch to try these out and I wanted to look for any sort of lag that would be bothersome to me, but I didn't really find any, so that's good. Sound quality is also pretty good, though they are in-ear, so um, the sound stage is kind of like meh, because, well, that's just the nature of in-ears. Still, you can still tell where people are coming from, left, right, up, down. For what you got, they're pretty decent. Okay, now this guy has a lot of... This guy has a lot of perks to it. It's got the low latency app decks and it does work for gaming and movies. And so it's great for PC, it's great for phone. Battery life is fantastic because I'm not going to wear this any longer than the four hours that it's prescribed. USB-C charge, always great to have. And there's an app with the EQ you can adjust like on the fly while you're still playing the music. So that's pretty damn great. But I do have some gripes like the touch controls, while they seem intuitive and it makes sense, there I, I have trouble like tapping it right. Like you can't just go one two. 
it's too fast for it sometimes and you'll have to go like one two and then it'll figure out like oh that's two taps so if you accidentally touch it with your finger it will activate because it's just, that's just kind of what it, how it is also when it's in your ear when you tap it you will hear the like the sounds like bah, bah. like another problem with it is that it's Bluetooth 5.0 and it's not quite done yet that being Bluetooth 5.0 should allow this to connect to multiple devices at once and work but this doesn't the thing is if you want to connect from one device to another device as in use it like say I'm connected to my PC and I'm like alright I gotta go I want to use it on my phone so then I'm gonna have to disconnect from my PC first then connect it to my phone or vice versa Sennheiser says they will do a firmware update on it so that's always good to hear but how long it's gonna take I don't know last time I read someone and reddit said that they contacted Sennheiser about it and that was in November when um, this was released right now it's January so I'm not too sure later down the line when you guys are watching this maybe um, they'll have that fixed but as of right now January what 20 23rd is um, it, can, it can only connect to one device at a time but other than that yeah I just don't like how it's um, uh, I can't connect to multiple devices at the same time and uh, touch controls are a little finicky that's just kind of how it is also sometimes taking it out of the case due to the shape it makes it a little difficult so you gotta have a little grip on it but if your finger is a little wet or you put on lotion not sure why um, there's that best features I like about it gotta be ambient control the whole ambient listening thing so if someone's talking to me I'll just tap it two times one two and I can hear all around me one problem with that however is that sometimes it activates my voice assistant and that can be annoying but since I don't use my voice assistant you guys I just turn it off in my app so there's always that that's good so yeah this thing's pretty good it just has a few kinks in it because it's not quite fully baked so to speak just need those firmware updates and I think we'll be good to go but as of right now January 23rd 2019 it's uh it's almost there it's almost there it's got almost everything though I would like to see like wireless charging of this that'd be kind of nice the touch controls are kind of funny but you know that's that's the future I guess all right this has been technical I hope this helps